not maybe not as heavily in my first year when I first started trying to interact with students and make these relationships with the schools and with the police and meet all the students. Um, but definitely in the last year, I, I haven't gone home a single day without <coughs> worrying about someone. So you know, I can tell you that um, both of my parents are here tonight, and they'll tell you how many phone calls they get. Um, about how worried I, I am about different kids and what decisions they're making. Um, I can tell you that, that right now, sitting here, I can think of kids that I absolutely know are using drugs, are sexually active, um, that you know are drinking, that have plenty of you know, different academic and disciplinary issues, or having issues at home, um, violence and abuse are an issue. I, I can't think of a topic that isn't happening in the town. You've had referrals from the police department using those services as a diversion program? It's mandatory community service hours are served through youth services now if the person that is in trouble is under 18. But has, has the police department sent any youth or youths to you in lieu of bringing any sort of juvenile delinquency complaint or adult complaint against that particular person, essentially giving that person an opportunity to do community service instead of going through, through the court process. That's what they that's what they currently do now. We have a, a program in place where they, if they have a child that they're worried about, or if they have had a disciplinary issue, instead of going to court, or sometimes it's court ordered amount of hours, mm -hmm. and then sometimes it's instead of going to court, the police will tell them you must serve this many hours, and they'll give them a date. And those community service hours are all served through me. And that gives me an opportunity to meet that student, and I'm there for all of those hours. So if they have 24 hours of community service, that's 24 hours to spend in my presence. And you, have you ever had one of these kids come in where they're referred to you to do community service, giving them essentially a strike? Say, here's your opportunity. If you don't do this community service, you don't meet with Jenny, you don't do what she tells you to do, we're going to bring some sort of court action against you. And What's the success rate in terms of, do you have any knowledge of anyone who has been given that opportunity and then got into trouble again, or, or just the converse? I have kids that have gotten into trouble again and again, but are still involved in my program. They'll still come to youth group or come to some of the other programs that we offer, or come to some of our workshops, and they've been in trouble since, and they might still be floundering. There's others that have completely joined and are now not getting in trouble. Um, we use the that's, that's what I'm looking for. The, the kids that have come in, that have given the opportunity to sort of straighten out, do the right thing, and haven't had to go back through either the police department or into the court system. Mm -hmm. uh, have you had those kids? Yes. Mm -hmm. And we, um, we also, I mean, we're, we now have school resource officers. This is also a somewhat new position. And um, we, uh, we work with them all the time, and we're in communication all the time with the school department as well, and especially the, the high school school psychologist and the high school the school resource officer, Tom Hass and Justin Madison. Those are two of our major contacts that we're always talking to about students for the reason of prevention, before it comes to mandatory community service hours, before it comes to school suspensions and expulsions. What kids can, do we see that are having problems, and what can we do to help them? One further question. It, have you had any kid come into your program who may have had mental health issues where suicide may have been a possibility that that child, you've taken that child so far away from where that person was when he or she came into your program? We definitely have dealt with cutting we, uh, and, and depression, and we have um, had you know, several kids that we've referred out to the school psychologist, our local psychologist, and health resources. And we also have kids that ha are meeting with a psychologist whose parents will sign a release so that I can speak with that psychologist so that we're on the same, the same page as well. So we still deal with their mental health professional, and then I'll be able to know what's happening in those sessions to best communicate between parents, psychologists, and the youth services program, as well as the school, please. That's, that's really the, the major thing that this position does is connect all of the, everyone that works with youth so that everyone knows what's going on. I, I know I said one further. I have one, <laughs> one further now. <laughs> and you've gone no. to the school of Rita Mullen, I think. <laughs>
<laughs> He's a good teacher, good mentor. Um, in, in terms of my view, not for any services, uh, I see it as it having filled a void that was there prior to two years ago. Something separate and apart from recreation, something, something separate and apart from all the athletic programs in town. These are the kids that may play some sort of sport, but this is something in place of or in addition to. Do I have the right sense of what North Reading Youth Services is? Yes, our social and recreational programs are really more of an opportunity for me to get to know some of the young people, and also it's a leadership opportunity because they plan and run our events. So that's how it's you know completely separate from a recreation program. It might look like you know when we go on trips or we have a battle of the bands that that's something that is recreational. But whereas the youth are planning it themselves and implementing that program and then working as staff that night, that's really a leadership program, not a recreational event. Thank you. Jenny, you uh, mentioned your folks are here? Yes. Can I, could you point them out? Yes, this is my father, David, and my mother, Alice. And I, nice to meet I think that encompasses what the depor department is, really. Because it's about, <laughs> <laughs> it's about uh, support and compassion for well, our young uh, people. So, I, I they're, they're everywhere with me. Well, this, this uh, comment is to your folks. I, I think they should be very, very proud of Thank your you. daughter. Joe, uh, you uh, um, well, if you if you want me to speak, I will. <laughs> no, I thought you wanted to. Oh, no, I do. Yes, I do. I do. Um, I I don't question at all the program in, in in what you've done, and I did listen very intently tonight. The problem I have, and I will lay it right out on the table, is the funding, is getting the money in this day and age. Um, as you know, is very, very difficult. And we're facing some very hard times, as you well know. And we may be facing another cut this month. This, uh, this is the problem I have, is dedicating any money into this program at this time. Um, if it was good times, I'm sure I'd look at it a little bit differently. Um, we still have public safety officers positions we're not filling. Um, I'm not saying theirs is more important than yours, but we have positions that are going <coughs> vacant because of funding. Um, I almost have to look at this like taking on a new position because it was never funded by the town. And we do have what we call a hiring freeze on. Um, I appreciate what you do and I thank you, but I, I just cannot support the funding for it at this time. I'm not able to. Jeff? Yes. Uh, as the liaison for NERISA, I've been able to attend the uh, meetings uh, by the uh, youth program. And you can only sit there and appreciate the effort that they put forth towards <coughs> children that are not theirs but treating them as if they are. And it's very, very important to have that within the community and within an organization. <coughs> I applaud you for that, and I, and I appreciate that, having two children at the age of 14 myself. Um, the town needs to understand your goal, your purpose, more than they do at this point. And I think as far as uh, Nerissa is concerned, if this position is created or established, what is Nerissa, for the benefit of the community who's listening on TV, what is Nerissa going to, to do to keep the program <coughs> going? Because I see down the road, this program can only but grow. And if it grows, it's going to cost more. And so there are concerns, you know, financially, how are we going to cover this program? How are we going to maintain this program? It's one thing to hire one person to do a job. It's another thing to give them the tools to do the job. So how will Narissa be able to help the town 
maintain this program for the benefit of the viewing community? I'll allow Marissa actually to answer that question, but I do just want to mention that to this point, the salary is always being funded and our department is actually self-sufficient. How, how is the department self-sufficient? I mean, right now we're looking at a, uh, an act, a, a total cost of about $60,000 a year. Right now you're looking for $35,000 through June 30th uh, of, of 10, correct? So as far as the programs are concerned and as far as the industry is concerned, again, for the benefit of the uh, listening uh, audience, how will you main be able to maintain the program and how much funds wise <coughs> generic general number do you think you can uh, raise to keep these programs going? First let me address um, the, um, <coughs> first let me address um, the youth services um, programs that they're running and in your handout there was a uh, one page that showed all of the activities that she runs and what's charged for each of those. Mm -hmm. the, the fees that are that are raised from each of the programs are designed specifically to cover the expenses for that, plus a little bit. Uh, this provides money for posters and paper and things like that for all of the uh, things. Mm -hmm. right. um, Marissa um, is still looking at a number of um, revenue streams. That, that we're working on, and it's not even two years yet, and we are, you know, we're still working on um, bringing that together. We need the $35,000, you know, to get through June 30th, because it's because of the fundraising issues that are out there right now, you know, for us. We just, we've had some wonderful events, very well attended, very supportive, but they don't, they didn't quite make as much as we had hoped, you know. It's difficult for people to reach in their pockets for one more thing. So we are continuing to work on it. Yes. Steve, did you? Uh, I, I just have a. I'm, I've been looking at the materials and just from a, an economic standpoint, trying to figure out because <coughs> it's been 100. And I'm looking at the uh, the P and L that was provided. You know, I, yeah, the, the profit loss. So, so the $123,000 basically that was raised. Does that include the fees for these activities? No, there, there, are two, um, there are two papers that you're looking at. One is the female for Narissa, right. the fundraising yeah. for and the other is the town, uh, from the town record of salary paid to, salary and benefits paid and program expenses that yeah. have come out of the gift account and out of the youth services department involvement. So Jenny's fees and everything goes go into that revolving account, and her expenses get paid out of that. Okay. So I, okay. I guess I, I don't. Yeah. What do we know? What the balance is in the revolving account? I mean, it, it shows forty-eight hundred dollars being expended. Uh, the How do you say treasurer? It shows about eight hundred dollars left in there. So the staff here, Jenny raised about forty-five hundred and spent somewhere about twenty-eight hundred. So there's still a balance up there. Uh, yeah, that was what I was trying to find out because you know a couple of years ago we were hopeful that you know the, the activities would help sustain the, mm -hmm. the thing. So we, what we're talking about is raising approximately forty-five hundred dollars in the past fiscal year. Right. You know, fees. Okay. And of course the balance from Melissa has been wonderful. All of our, our support services are and our community service and other things that are all listed as, uh, <coughs> as you know that are free services are kind of the reason Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or have support services. Right. So. Right. Hi, Louise, Sanders, Walkway, Trenton. 